Please welcome the current Vice Chair of U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom, Abraham Cooper. I would like to begin by expressing USERF's gratitude to the organizers of the IRF Summit in convening this important event and specifically its commitment to draw attention to religious prisoners of conscience around the globe. I would also like to thank my fellow commissioners for taking the time to join me on this panel here today. Allow me to introduce them. First, one of our great heroes, Congressman Frank Wolf, was appointed to the commission by House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy. He served with great distinction in the U.S. House of Representatives for 34 years, where he authored the International Religious Freedom Act, or IRFA. I might add personally that his door was always open to human rights campaigners and to victims of religious intolerance. Congressman Wolf. Eric Ulan was appointed to the commission by Senator Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. He is currently a public advisor for the Paragon Health Institute and has a long and extensive history of service in the United States Congress, the executive branch and the private sector. Eric, if you will join us, please. Professor Stephen Schneck was appointed to the commission by President Joe Biden. He is a well-known advocate for Catholic social justice teachings in public life and currently serves on the governing boards of Catholic Climate Covenant and Catholic Mobilizing Network. And I can attest that Professor Schneck is also a first-class mensch. It's an honor to ask him to join us. The uh, last of the troublemakers joining us this morning, David Curry, was recently appointed to the commission. He is president and CEO of Open Doors USA and is an advocate for religious freedom and human rights for all around the world. David. For those of you that are not familiar, USERF is an independent bipartisan advisory board that monitors religious freedom worldwide using international standards and makes policy recommendations to the President, the Secretary of State, and Congress. USERF has nine commissioners appointed by the President and the congressional leadership from both political parties. USERF is separate from the State Department, but works closely with the Office of International Religious Freedom and the Ambassador at Large for International Religious Freedom. USERF, the State Department's Religious Freedom Office, and a senior advisor at the White House were all created over 20 years ago by the International Religious Freedom Act of 1998 commonly known as IRFA. So later on, if you have any complaints, it's all Frank Wolf's fault. <laughs> Today, we want to focus on USERF's efforts to support religious prisoners of conscience, often referred to as RPOCs. To begin with, I'm going to ask Commissioner Wolf, can you please tell us about USERF's work to highlight RCOPs and the significance of this advocacy. Good morning, welcome. I wanna thank uh, you, Vice Chairman Cooper. As you, sir, if we believe it is essential to shine a light on victims of religious persecution. There are untold number of people in prison or otherwise targeted for religion or belief around the world. The Commission works to provide faces of these victims 
and tell their stories with the hope of improving their situation and drawing attention to religious freedom conditions around the globe. One of USERF's main projects is to highlight prisoners of conscience, the freedom of religion or belief, or FORB victims. By law, by law, USERF is required to maintain a public list that identifies, documents victims who were detained or imprisoned, disappeared, tortured, placed under house arrest, or subject to forced renunciation of faith for their religion or belief in countries that USERF recommends either CPC designation or also countries of non-state actors be designated entities of particular concern. Currently, USERF's Freedom of Religion and Belief Victims List features over 1,500 victims, and yet some people think there are thousands, others think there are millions. We, we see by the Pew polling data that 80% of the world's population lives in a religiously repressive nation. In addition to cataloging religion prisoners of conscience, USERF engages in other activities to advocate for these prisoners and others and advance religious freedom protections, including highlighting the cases in all publications and the reports, press meetings with both American and foreign government officials. The fact is, when Katrina's father, Tom Lantos, would go to, to Russia, every time they went to Russia, they had a list of dissonance. Tom Lantos never went anywhere without having a list of dissonance, and before the meeting got started, they gave them the list to advocate for it. Every delegation that goes anywhere where these things are taking place should have a list of prisoners that they advocate for. The commission also took an act of speaking out for Colonel Zen. I'm going to adopt Colonel Zen as a prisoner of conscience. Colonel Zen is 90 years old. A prison sentence for, for Colonel Zen would, would be terrible. So the commission advocates that way. I would urge everybody here to adopt a prisoner of conscience like a Colonel Zen and advocate and speak out. We meet with the NGOs and family members of victims like the mother of Nigerian Leah Sherabu, who I am also going to adopt, who was abducted by ISIS of West Africa as a child and remains in their custody for not, for not renouncing her Christian faith. And the wife of Saudi blogger Raif Badiwa, who all the released after serving a decade in prison, a decade in prison. And if you go on the Wikipedia list to see what the Saudis did to him, it's brutal. He remains unable to reunite with his family due to a 10-year travel ban. Anyone who goes to Saudi Arabia, this would be one of the prime cases that they raised. If you ever speak to a Saudi person here or in Saudi Arabia, his case should be raised. We also coordinate with, God bless, Tom Lantos Human Rights Commission to find a member of Congress interested in advocating for these prisoners. I urge everybody here to contact their member of Congress, House and Senate, and ask them to work with USERF to adopt a prisoner conscious. Obviously, the advocacy is always with the consent of the parties involved and their families to make sure their safety and security and highest priority. Ultimately, it's a do no form. So in, in closing, I remember in Perm Camp 35 where Natan Sharansky was, the colonel, the commandant of the camp, Colonel Osin, treated Natan Sharansky well because he didn't understand all these letters that were coming in for, for Sharansky. So we wanted to make sure that nothing bad happened. It actually improves their life when they're in prison. Bottom line, it helps prisoners. Two, it shows they are not forgotten. They know if you were in prison that you are not forgotten. Your family knows that you're not forgotten. It makes all the difference in the world. Just talk to Andrew Brunson. He can tell you. So let's all adopt prisoners. Let's all speak out. Let's all work to get that 90% pew dollar at 80% down to 70% that persecuted, 60%, 50%, 40%, and eventually none at all. God bless you, and thank you very much. <laughs>